How frustrating is it to be at this year after year and have no suspect description, no um, no ID, no leads, no nothing? I looked at your case and I was like, oh my gosh, they don't seem to have anything, Maggie. Well, we do have leads, but yes, it is frustrating. You know, when I first was told she was murdered and when I finally got to accept that, you know, and I was told that we had DNA, I thought it would be solved within a year or two, and now we're heading towards the eighth anniversary. And it, it's hard, but like any mother would, I'm not going to stop till you know, we do find her killer. Does the pain remain as intense as when you first learned of this horror? It does, but it doesn't. Somebody once said early on that it would become different, and I didn't know what they meant. And it's that you learn to carry it in different ways. Um, because I go on these caravans, because I believe her memory is making a difference, that I'm doing things in honor of her. And I guess that makes it easier. But just listening to you all do some of those news stories, you know, I could feel the, I could feel the tears welling up again. You know, so it. You just never know, but you learn to walk with it because you have no choice. Well, Tulsa police believe they have the killer's DNA from the crime scene, but they've compared it to thousands and thousands of samples and have not been able to find a match. I want to go out uh, to John Lieberman, investigative reporter who's been working on this case, who brought us this story, and we thank you for that, John. Um, Maggie's been pushing for more DNA at arrest laws. Critics say, well, it's not fair to take a swab from somebody who's just been arrested and not convicted. But, boy, there's been several cases that have been solved because of those kinds of swabs. Now, as far as this case goes, how would anybody have known that a beautiful young co-ed lived in that apartment to break into that apartment? Doesn't this have to be somebody who has some connection to Brittany? There are so many different ways that this could have happened. Maybe somebody worked for the electric company or the cable company and knew by the name and the date of birth that a young woman lived in this apartment. Maybe they were casing it out for days or weeks, knowing what time she came home. But the one thing is certain. Police will solve this case. They have DNA. What this case needed and what we're doing tonight is national exposure because police need a name. They have the DNA. They need a name. Who was seen in that apartment complex? Who didn't belong there? And it's very true, as Dr. Zingman said, that this person could be transient. This location is close to I-40, a major highway. This person could have hopped right on the highway and been off. Well, you can help us, possibly. You at home, find Brittany's killer. Tulsa police have put together a profile of the man they believe killed Brittany. Uh, cops believe the killer is somebody who may have started behaving very differently immediately after the time of this murder. So think back to September 2004. If you live in the Tulsa area, uh, was there somebody who um, left the area? Did they have an extreme change in behavior? Uh, did they regularly travel on the highways? I-44, I-35, I-40. If you know something, please call uh, Tulsa.